So, welcome. Uh, in this particular class, we are going to do something which is a general case of suction and blowing. Now, suction and blowing in this particular case, see all the time in the previous uh, classes also we said that what if there is a there is a is if the if the plate is not impervious in nature that means you have this plate and uh, it can either bleed like this like a perspiration or there can be a reverse direction of the flow that means it could be porous and you could have this flow going down like that okay so for example if this velocity is upward we can say it is positive and v downward we can consider that to be negative right so uh, so this is the general case of basically uh, what we call suction and blowing right the mechanism of suction and mechanism of blowing now uh, how to analyze a situation like this that is the uh, thing that we are going to attempt in this particular class okay so uh, here we are going to do a uh, thing which you uh, will uh, we will go into the details a little later that we are going to take a generalized equation and uh, that equation will be valid not for just this plate it can be also valid for a wedge that means if the plate is at an inclined angle and if it is still blowing in the same way okay but in any case this part that means the wedge part we will devote a full lecture on it and show that how this wedge uh, can actually you know affect the what will be the dynamics okay but in this particular case is a general wedge okay it's a general wedge that we have taken over here okay and the equations that i'm going to write some of the equations we are going to derive a little later but for the time being for this particular class you are going to take the equation as is in the later lectures you will understand how those equations are kind of applicable what is the level of applicability so basically this one and the and the general case of a wedge solution will come hand in hand so you should ideally look at it in a more integrated kind of a fashion okay so uh, for a general wedge because then we do not have to come back and again do it for a general wedge okay. So, for a general wedge the u infinity can be written as x to the power of m. Now, how is it exactly written we will come to that in the next lecture okay and it also has a uniform say surface temperature temperature T naught got it. So, it is a general wedge in which you have u infinity given by c x to the power of m what m is we will see okay m is related to the slope okay of the wedge how those things are related we will come a little later where the significance of m will be clear for the timing you can say that m is some way associated with this wedge angle if that wedge angle is beta m in some way is related to that beta that is for the given at, at that uh, so it is a function of the wedge angle in some way okay uh, what those angles are we will come a little later okay but let us concentrate and see what it happens what it does to the suction and blowing okay now following our old similarity transformation okay we can write something like this here where this is nothing but the stream function okay the significance of this and nita is of course the same as the similarity variable what we had earlier okay so v that means the velocity the vertical component of the velocity becomes something like this Okay. So, as you know that V is nothing but the differential of psi with respect to x right psi being the uh, stream function okay. This is once again nothing like the it is exactly the similarity solution that what we did did earlier okay. Uh, but V now is equal to V naught right at 
y equal to 0 which means at neta equal to 0 right ok. So, v naught will be given by u infinity gamma x into m plus 1 by 2 minus f evaluated at 0 right ok. So, v naught is also once again just writing it in a proper way f 0 that means f evaluated at 0 right ok. Then x raised to the power of m minus 1 by 2 ok multiplied by gamma ok. So, this is the form that we have in this particular case. We also know that f naught is not a function of x ok. So, f naught is not a function of x that part we know ok. Therefore, if this is not a function of x then you can imagine this is the left hand side this is the right hand side of the two equation right. So, if f naught is not a function of x then let us write f naught take everything to the other side is basically v naught 2 by m plus 1 1 by gamma c 1 plus x m minus 1 by 2 ok. So, this is not a function of x that means we can say it is not a function of g x right. So, obviously in order for this to be true that f naught is not a function of x you can imagine that your v naught has to vary as x to the power of m minus 1 by 2 right because then only this and this will cancel each other right ok. So, if does not if it does not vary by this particular way then you will have an x dependence f naught will be a function of f in that particular case if this is if this is not true got it if this is not true that is what is going to happen. So, if that happens the entire similarity solution actually breaks down ok. So, for the similarity solution to be applicable for the general case of suction and blowing ok what we are going to have is that your f naught cannot be a function of x that is a given ok and therefore, your v naught has to vary in the same way as x to the power of m minus 1 by 2 which if m is equal to 0 that means, it is a flat plate basically right with no angle right. So, v naught in that particular case should vary as x to the power of minus half right for similarity solution to hold. right so that means okay as you as your distance x increases right is 1 over inverse right so it's basically comes down in this particular fashion correct that is how it is coming down okay and as you know that the boundary layer grows up by x to the power of half right so the boundary layer as it progresses this actually decays whether it is moving up or coming down that depends right it is like the whether it is a porous matrix or it is like a perspiration ok. So, for this to hold the similarity solution to hold you have v naught which should vary as x to the power of minus half ok. Now, this m once again we have not said about the nature of m except that it is equal to 0 for uh, beta equal to 0 that means when the wedge becomes a flat plate. Now, m equal to 1 corresponds to a stagnation flow that means, it is a flow somewhat like this in other words it is also called the Hyman's flow ok. So, that is equal to m equal to 1 once again we will come across what these quantities are right. So, in that case v naught should vary as x to the power of 0 ok that is it is x independent. got it it is x independent got it. So, this is x independent for the Hyman's flow it is x to the power of minus half for a flat plate 
and for in between any other parameters or any other angles okay it should vary as x to the power of minus m minus 1 by 2 right in order for the similarity solution to hold now remember you can have any type of suction and blowing right for these kind of parameters if the functional form is like this then only the similarity solution will hold okay but in real life you can have if, uh, other kinds of suction and blowing as well okay so in this particular vein let us define a parameter called f naught which is 2 by m plus 1 v naught by u infinity reynolds number or of half okay this particular parameter space is called the blowing parameter okay it affects the boundary layer thickness of course it does okay and the shear obviously because if the boundary layer thickness changes the angles will change so naturally the shear will change right so in this particular way this f naught parameter this part is called the blowing parameter remember this v naught by u naught into reynolds number based on x raised to the power of half now how does suction and blowing actually play a role so physically intuitively so if there is a say a blowing happening like this okay what do you expect initially the boundary layer say is something like this right with suction and blowing when you actually pump in momentum uh, in that upward direction the boundary layer is supposed to go like that right so there is a displacement of the boundary layer in the upward direction right so in other words the slope if this is this was the slope for the uh, for the boundary layer after it was kind of blown outward this slope over here will be much more you know much more higher in that way because the boundary layer thickness is now lower in this particular at the same location if you talk about location to location at the same location before blowing the boundary layer thickness was delta after blowing it say it is delta prime so obviously delta prime is more than delta similarly when you actually have suction that means when you have it in the opposite direction the boundary layer becomes thinner okay so the gradients actually gets enhanced okay so the gradients will get enhanced so this actually proves that why we are going to get a change in shear and obviously a change in boundary layer okay so let us look at the energy transport what does it do to the energy transport so here we have easily explained that if delta changes okay obviously you know that the 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 cp cf or basically the the drag is dependent on delta okay so naturally uh, as delta changes that also changes okay so the energy transport okay if you recall the energy transport that we did earlier this is i am just adding a term called m plus 1 in this particular case we will come to the significance of m plus 1 once again when we do the suction when we do the faulkner scan class of solution once again assume that this is the energy transport okay let's let's assume it in this particular way so this is that let us do a little bit of mathematical jugglery on this or Theta neta okay, straightforward integration. Now theta infinity is equal to one we all know that I am not going through the steps once again theta 0 theta prime 0 0 to infinity
okay so therefore theta neta that means the total function So this is the total expression that we actually get for theta neta okay. Now uh, for a wedge we will see how this ac actually varies but it is already incorporated in that m plus 1 right. Now if we look at therefore uh, the solution that how this is going to really you know look like okay when you actually have suction and blowing let us look at the PPT where we will show that how that thing actually happens. So okay, let us look at first uh, that how the boundary layer is going to change okay, using quantitative information. What I did was draw qualitatively okay, what is going to happen. Now if you look at the annotations that I have actually made, if you recall that your V is a function of u infinity into delta by x, is not that so? Right? Okay. And uh, delta is obviously x into Reynolds number minus x to the power of half, right? Okay, so v naught was actually equal to uh, u infinity into Reynolds number to the power of minus half, right? So these are the four scales that I have written on the top of this particular thing, right? Okay, uh, because the first scale comes from the fact that dv by dy is the same as du by dx because that is the continuity scale that we have okay. Now what we have done is therefore we have plotted this blowing parameter which we already defined in our uh, previous class okay and f double prime 0 is nothing but the slope okay or the corresponding shear you can talk about it as a shear okay. So you have basically two series one is blowing parameter and one is the suction parameter. So this part which is the positive side is basically blowing and this part which is the negative side is basically suction right. So this part is positive, this part is negative right. So as you can see that when there is, when you continuously go on blowing more and more that means you are increasing the blowing parameter right. If you recall what the blow, blowing parameter was we just did it. Uh, let me write it down over here so that there is no confusion okay x to the power of half right. So that was the blowing parameter right and as you can see the order is also we have just proven the order over here this is like v naught scales as u infinity into delta into Reynolds number to the power of minus half that means they are of the same order. So that is why you see the numbers are also of the same order right they are all about 1 of the order 1 that is what exactly what we have done over here. So what you see as you increase the, the blowing as I said that the boundary layer is blown outward right. So therefore there is a sharp decay in the shear because here if you look at it so this is the shear that you found normally for a flat plate. So the middle one is an impervious flat plate right. So as you can see over here that there is a lot of blowing okay and because of that there is a sharp decay in the shear stress right whereas when you actually have suction that means the boundary layer should become thinner okay you see over here that there is a sharp increase okay almost from about 0.3 right all the way to about close to 2.7 right so it's roughly a one order increase okay uh, in the uh, shear stress so there is a very high shear level when you actually have suction at the wall right and the blowing parameter is always remember of the order 1 comes from this particular scaling and from our definition. Now let us look at okay in the suction side we went up to this okay whereas on the blowing side 
we found that it becomes equal to 0 very fast right. Do you see that it becomes 0 right after we cross about 0 0.5. So, around 0 0.6, 0 0.7 it becomes equal to 0 ok. Why? Why that is the case ok. That is because as you blow the boundary layer more and more this is how the boundary layer is increasing as you increasing the blowing right. As you, after you increase it beyond a certain amount the flow starts to separate ok. The flow starts to separate not exactly like that, but say you have increased it to the limit that it has reached the. So, here the flow will actually separate ok, because the gradient is slowly becoming shallower and shallower. If you look at my hand it becomes slowly shallower and shallower and shallower till at a point when it becomes equal to 0 and after that there should be actually what we call a separation ok. So, the flow actually separates beyond a certain point because the gradient the slopes will become like this. So, this is the original one this will be the one after some time this will be after some time this will be after some time. So, at one point of time this particular point will actually separate. So, that is the reason why blowing you cannot go to high levels of blowing because you will separate the boundary layer right. Whereas, on the suction side you can go very high because uh, it is a favorable uh, kind of a phenomena. So, that you are actually you are compressing the boundary layer in such a way that your shear goes on and on and on it increases more and more there is no separation effect as such ok. So, that is an interesting thing ok. Now, the blowing parameter let us look at it in terms of the you know the heat transfer ok, because the heat transfer is the other half of the story that we have ok, for which we we said that what will be the uh, what will be the theta ok, we derive the theta. So, if you look at it here it is Nusselt number ok divided by Reynolds number to the power of uh, 0.5 right. So, because that is the Reynolds number scaling is always half ok ok and we have different Prandtl number families after that. So, this is once again the blowing parameter space ok. So, once again you have this point at 0 right which is basically the flat plate impervious flat plate this part is basically blowing this part is once again suction. Once again the same thing what will happen when as you know that when you make the boundary layer smaller ok that means you make delta go down delta t obviously also goes down right delta t also goes down the thermal boundary layer also goes down correct ok. Similarly, when you make this go up ok delta goes up delta t also goes up right. So, it actually has a very similar kind of connotation right. So, in this case what you see is that your basically your Nusselt number by Reynolds number scaling it goes to 0 right, right about the same time when your separation actually happens right, because separation means you lose the boundary layer altogether. Whereas, it goes upward that means you have an enhanced heat transfer because of the lowering of delta t because if you recall h is proportional to 1 over delta t. So, as delta t goes down up uh, or goes down h actually goes up. So, therefore, you have a sharp increase ok. So, this is a very similar trend as f double prime 0 right very similar trend as your shear except for the fact now with Prandtl number dependency you have different types of variations ok. The curves do not actually fall on the top of each other ok, they are actually a little bit spread out. So, that is what you see over here the curves are a little bit spread out ok and you see that for Prandtl number as you go on changing the Prandtl number the slope of these lines actually change ok. But however, they seem to merge ok beyond the for all the blowing cases ok, but whereas for the suction cases there is a little bit of difference that means there is a little bit of branching out of this particular curve, but otherwise they are very similar to your uh, f double prime ok. So, what suction and blowing does is that in a nutshell when you do blowing you actually increase the boundary layer thickness both for thermal as well as for uh, thermal and as well as for momentum boundary layer as a result you reduce the heat transfer coefficient and you reduce the uh, the shear stress ok. Whereas, on the other side if you go to the suction side of things ok, what happens is that you are reducing the uh, you are as you go on increasing the the or decreasing the blowing parameter or that means you are increasing the level of suction your boundary layer thickness becomes very short. As the boundary layer thickness becomes very short both your wall shear stress that means your uh, basically your drag 
as well as your heat transfer coefficient both shoots up. These are the things that you must take out from this particular piece of argument and this is the happens because suction makes the boundary layer smaller whereas blowing blows the boundary layer off. Now this is valid for all types not just for flat plate, it is also valid for wedges if of any particular angle. But for the similarity solution to hold we already know that it has to vary in a certain way. Okay. This suction parameter has to vary or the blowing parameter has to vary in a certain way. That means V naught has to vary in a certain way which is basically given by x to the power of m minus 1 by 2. Okay. So, when once those things are obeyed this is the nature of the graphs that you have. Okay. So, in the next class we are going to look at the wedge.